Okay, welcome to part two of lecture one for bluff body aerodynamics. So now we can get into discussing the actual content of the course. Before we get into the real first lecture, I want to talk a little bit about kind of the uh, expectations and a little bit more information about how the course is going to work. So I'm going to assume that you've taken undergraduate fluid mechanics at some point. I understand it may have been some time ago. Some of you were working for years um, since completing your undergraduate degrees before going back to school. Um, but, but, if, but I do have to assume you've sort of seen fluid mechanics before. If there's anything you need to brush up on, um, I recommend that you find a good reference book. And I may be able to find some links to post to some books, although I don't know if they'll be electronic resources if you need uh, a refresher resource. But we won't have time to cover that ourselves. We're going to cover part of chapter two from the text today. This includes a brief review of basic fluid mechanics, and we'll continue that into next week. So how this course is going to work, um, right? The, the class preparation material is listed in the syllabus. Um, there are sort of reading assignments, but really they're just the reading material on which each lecture is based. The textbook's not great. Um, it is free, um, but it does form a good basis for an instructor that has sufficient expertise, which hopefully I am, to build the course on. So that's the approach I've taken here. So reading the textbook is actually not expected, except where I explicitly mention it in the lectures to go and look at a certain section here and there. In the lectures, the um, I'll be presenting slides which cover the material at a, at a high level and then add some additional details. Um, and in class conceptual and quantitative problem solving in, in some lectures. Uh, I don't think there's much of that today because it's just kind of an introduction. Um, and so you'll be videos like this that'll be um, broken up into parts of me going through the lectures um, and the slides as well will be posted. I try to emphasize conceptual understanding in these, in these class lectures. I try to pick up on the most challenging and important ideas and concepts and focus on those things. Um, and, and in some cases to supplement the material available in the textbook, which doesn't always explain everything very well. We use this, I, I use this conceptual problem solving approach um, to help students to define explicitly what they know and what they don't know. And like I said, all the lectures except for the last one um, will be immediately followed by a quiz. Again, you'll have 24 hours to complete the quiz and once started, the duration will be sort of anywhere from a few minutes to an hour. Um, mostly these will be multiple choice um, and it's meant to help you keep up with the lecture material. As mentioned in the course uh, outline when we were going through it, there's three labs. Each lab essentially will comprise an assignment to carry out one or more CFD simulations using the SimScale environment. For uh, the, the lab work, it's going to be done in groups. Uh, the groups will be four or five students. I'll have to see what the final enrollments are like to determine exactly what group sizes will work best. Um, this will include simulation work and report writing. Um, the groups need to be formed by 9 a.m. Uh, on June 10th. Um, and you do this via a post to the group formation discussion board. And uh, a student that's not, in, and I'll, I'll provide some information about what the, those posts should look like. Um, students who are not in a group by that date and time will be assigned to one by the instructors and GAs. So project reports um, will require some group effort while maintaining clearly identifiable individual contributions. Um, specifically in lab one and two, there'll be individual contributions in the report. Um, in lab three, it will be a single joint report. Um, and the, for labs one and two, it'll be 50% group grade, 50% individual grade. So a little bit more about SimScale. Again, this is a, a, a cloud-based, so you access it through a web browser CFD system. It's based on free open source software, OpenFoam. Um, this is a, a sort of widely used free CFD system. It's not very user friendly, which is where SimScale is nice. It's sort of built a, a very helpful graphical user interface on top of OpenFoam. Again, I'll provide instructions for signing up on the Blackboard site. And again, here's the course code to get an academic plan, which I'll detail in those instructions and, and in the assignment that will be associated with it. 
Once you do this, you'll get about 3,000 core hours or half a core a year of computational resources. That means that if you were running one CPU core, you could run it for 3,000 hours. Um, and this should be plenty for the coursework if it's sort of cleverly shared between the members of each group. Right, in, in lab one, you shouldn't need a significant amount of resources. Lab two and lab three will need more significant amounts, um, but you should still have plenty. Anyways, I'm going to introduce SimScale in more detail in, in week three and four, and you have to sign up, as I mentioned, by June 9th. Okay, so that's the end of part two. Um, we'll continue with part three.